Welcome and welcome back to Just Law on Ikra TV. I'm your host, Ilyas Bulbulia. This is the uh, second part to the show. Just before the break, we started looking at nationality applications. And we were looking at the main requirements which need to be fulfilled when somebody wishes to apply for nationality. Now, although today's show will focus on nationality, uh, if your questions relate to other matters, please feel free to call on the number that appears at the bottom of your screen and hopefully I will be able to give you some guidance in relation to the questions that you have. Uh, just before the break, I was outlining the so sort of main four or five requirements which need to be fulfilled uh, when you make a nationality application. And uh, one of the main requirements is that you must uh, have indefinite leave to remain in the United Kingdom. Second requirement is residence, that you must have lived in the United Kingdom for a certain period of time. The other requirement, uh, again crucial, is that you must have sufficient knowledge of uh, English and sufficient knowledge of life in the United Kingdom. So we'll look at that in greater detail as well in a bit. The other requirement is that you must be of good character and this is what causes significant number of problems. Uh, the finally, you're looking at absences. They're the sort of key areas that you look at. Have you got indefinite leave to remain in the United Kingdom? Have you lived in the United Kingdom for three or five years as required? Uh, is, have you passed the relevant English tests? Uh, what is your character like? Is that going to cause a problem? And then ultimately, you look at your absences. So they're the sort of key points that you look at when you look at a, 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 a nationality application. Let's, let's break that down. I know in previous shows we've looked at this but uh, never got to the end of it. Um, indefinite leave to remain in the United Kingdom, a fundamental requirement, is not something which is difficult. Now, you might have received your indefinite leave to remain under various categories. It doesn't matter how you got it. That the main point is you must have indefinite leave. So, for example, somebody who comes to the United Kingdom under, under, uh, under a spouse visa will get indefinite now after five years. Let's look at this in greater detail after we've taken our next call. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Um, welcome, Salam, brother. How are you? Yeah, alhamdulillah, good. How are you? You okay? Fine, thank you. I just got a question regarding the, the submission of documents for a, sure. a spouse visa. Okay, yep. Um, the thing is, uh, my son's applied for his wife to come over. Okay. Um, now we've uploaded the documents okay. to you know for her to you know for the Islamabad. Okay. Okay. For her, you know the date. Yeah. Um, do does the sponsor also need to uh, upload documents here, or does he need to take them in person? No. One of these scanning no. centres. No, it's just uh, one of the things. It, uh, as long as the documents are uploaded, uh, it's fine. Um, the person abroad in Pakistan doesn't take yeah. uh, the documents at all. The only thing that the person in Pakistan, the applicant, takes, is. Uh, um, uh, f in this case, he takes his passport, yeah. he takes his appointment letter, yeah. uh, which is generated from that VFS website, you know, when mm -hmm. you book the appointment. So he takes the appointment letter and he takes the document checklist. Okay. Uh, so there are... Th um, yeah, I've just got one query. You know, regards the, regarding the, you know, the communication and the chat yeah. logs, I mean, that's quite a lot of bundle. I mean, what is the best thing to do with that then? I mean, is it better for him to take... No, you they know, take they them to one of the scanning centers um, in the UK no, as well. No, the, the the easiest thing to do with 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 chat is um, to take to do screenshots, and okay. so uh, how long have both both parties been chatting? Um, um, is it about yeah. a year or so, or is it longer? Well, they've been married like three months now, and um, well, look, if it's three months, so yeah. uh, uh, let's say uh, you put the evidence in for those three months, and you also yeah. put the evidence in for mm -hmm. a couple of months before marriage. So let's say you've got six months in total. So with yeah. six months, you've got about 180 days approximately. What you could do is have a screenshot for every other day. Um, right, so, okay. so, so for the WhatsApp call, for the WhatsApp message with the dates, a screenshot for every other day. If you did that... But what he's done, um, what he's done, he's printed every, you know, um, in the, is it from, in you know, the past three months, he's printed all that off. Mm. You don't need to. The problem nowadays is what we used to do before is print everything off and send it in the post. Yes. It's becoming impossible now to upload that. Uh, if it's 
if the documents in terms of volume that they're quite big it's going to yeah. be very difficult for you to scan and upload you're better off taking it to the uh, uh, one of these visa centers and getting it uploaded there so um, there are a number of visa centers in the United in the Kingdom like yeah. Bradford Birmingham L London yeah. so you pay 78 75 pounds you basically take it there and get it uploaded but what I would have done is is uh, uh, over let's say six months if you yeah. took a screenshot every other day y let's mm -hmm. say for example you've got 150 pages if you were printing it four to a page uh, that would come up to about 40 pages and if you break it down into 2020 uh, oh, okay. and then you upload it that would have been the easier way of doing it that's what they prefer they don't want let's nowadays what you have is people chat on whatsapp what they don't yes. want is for you to export the chat history and to print it all out on Word uh, or, or in Notepad and get a big ream of, of chat history. Oh, that's they don't. don't. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no. we, we used to do that as well before, to be honest. But oh they don't gosh. want that. You know what they want, really, nowadays, yeah. is for people to cut down on that. And the only way you can do it is get you take a screenshot. So let's say you're chatting. The first message for the day will come up with the date uh, that the chat is taking place. You take a screenshot of that. You miss a day, miss two days take another screenshot so that way you limit the number of screenshots and no, you print okay. four to a page you print in black and white then it's easier to upload so what you end up with is let's say about 20 25 pages of calls yeah. 20 25 pages of chat history no. well, that is sufficient because if you think about it they've only only been married for three months so it's not yeah. like we're proving the relationship over three years where we need loads of documents Right, we're okay. just really showing that after the marriage, the marriage is subsisting. So in three months, we don't need loads of evidence. Um, right, okay. Just one uh, when, 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 on when's the, the appointment in Islamabad? When it's is it? It's on the 27th of this month. Okay. I mean, my, my view would be just do the screenshots and upload it now, if you can. Okay, okay. That would be um, yeah, do they still need to submit the appendix too? No, we or, don't. You know, no, no. Because no. you know the online form that's now yes. done? The online form now incorporates appendix oh, two, okay. so you don't okay. do it. You don't do it. Okay. Um, before you had to, but no, you don't do appendix two because appendix two only asked questions about uh, income and the relationship and accommodation. So that's what appendix two was there for: relationship when you met, when your relationship started, uh, when did you live together, uh, accommodation, how many bedrooms you've got, uh, employment, where do you work, etc. All that is now yeah. in the online form, so you've answered all that already. Okay, thank you so much for that, brother. No problem. Eh? Thank you. Thank you very much for thank your call. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take our next call. Uh, hello, Assalamu alaikum. Quite hello. Uh, thank you for calling. What's your question? Um, my question is about nationality. What um, evidence do we need to um, uh, send to them when you apply for nationality? Okay. Um, in terms of uh, what's the circumstances? Is somebody married to a British citizen? And yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the it's person married to British citizen. Yeah, your husband uh, um, applied married to you. And when did he get his indefinite leave to remain? He's gonna get it ending of next year. And, yeah. Okay. That's fine. Um, so very limited information actually. Uh, it, it, it needs to be submitted. Um, what he submits is his passport. Okay. He puts one uh, f his passport size photograph uh, on the application form. Okay, so one photo. One okay. photo. Just do the paper application. It's easier than doing it online. Just do the paper. So his passport, if he's got an old passport with visa stamps in there, he puts his old passport in. One photograph. Okay. okay. Um, now, he doesn't need, uh, if he's got a biometric card saying he's got indefinite leave, he puts that in. So that's our third okay. thing. Passport, one photo, biometric card. Okay. Because he's lived here for five years, uh, yeah. because under the new rules you need to have lived here for five years he doesn't need to put your documents in so he doesn't need to put your passport in well actually sorry uh, because he's applying for uh, if he applies for nationality straight after indefinite leave uh, he okay. will sorry he will need to put your passport in uh, despite okay. the fact he's lived here for five years because he's applying straight away not waiting one year so he will need to put your passport in uh, he will need to put your marriage certificate in the, the, the reason your passport and your marriage certificate is being submitted is because he wants to apply immediately after getting indefinite leave to remain. Uh, yeah. if, if he was to wait one year, then 
he wouldn't need your passport or your marriage certificate. But let's say he's applying straight away. He doesn't want to okay. wait. So then he would have to put your passport in to show your British and your marriage certificate in to show you're uh, married to each other. Okay. Uh, as far as the English language requirement is concerned, uh, actually there's no need to put it in because if you obtained indefinite leave to remain after October 2013, obviously yeah. he's going to get it now, it's assumed that you have met the English language requirement already. So it's really his passport, old and new, one passport size photograph, biometric card, your passport and the marriage certificate. English is assumed that it's fulfilled. Okay. Now, uh, uh, under the new form, it says, uh, under the new form, it talks about um, if you've got weight slips, put your weight slips in, put old P60s, put them in. If you want to put them in, put the old P60s in and put last three months of weight slips in. Oh, you don't have to. I've never had a problem with it. Um, um, sometimes most people can't find their P60s, um, so we don't put it in. There's no requirement okay. to be working. It's never. Also, do we need to put a character reference? Uh, two character references. Yeah, but th that that's that's not a. When you fill the paper form in, there's a yeah. section uh, that you get to where it'll ask for two referees. One person has to be a professional. The other person has to be British, not related okay. to you. But that that's part of the part of the form that you're you're completing. Uh, uh, but in terms of documents, literally, it is those documents: passports, BRP. And the marriage certificate, uh, so, English so, uses. Sorry. So the character reference part, does the person need to fill it in, or do we fill it in? Uh, either is fine, either, uh, because the person who provides the reference, they have to sign it. No? That's the main right. requirement. Okay, they sign it. Oh, okay. Now my okay. personal view is, okay, it's better if you get them to fill it in, because then it right. looks like somebody has done it. Uh, if you okay. use your own handwriting for both, then sometimes they become a bit suspicious. So. Uh, 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 although the requirement is for them to sign it, the requirement yeah. isn't for them to fill it in. My right. view is the best is you get to referee one, then referee two, get them to fill it in because it's normally straightforward anyway. They're saying, what, as a referee, they're saying, what's your name? How do you know this person? How old are you? What's your profession? What's your address? What's your contact number, email address? And, 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 and sign it. So just get them to do it. Um, right. that, that's okay. normally easy. But document-wise, uh, it is much easier than you know the other applications that you do for the extension for indefinite leave that's a bit okay. of a headache and quite document heavy but nationality is actually very straightforward right and also when you do send off the documents for indefinite leave uh, is there a scanning system or do we post it like we did for the for no. the leave to remain you, you have to scan now you have um okay so whether so you you're have to find a yeah um, so you know when you do the online form once yeah. you've completed the online form, uh, right. to book the appointment uh, for the biometrics, the fingerprint, uh, fingerprints yeah. and the photos to be taken, it takes you on to another website. So you book the appointment, let's say it's going to be December the 15th. So yeah. you've got two options. Prior to that date, you can scan and upload it yourself, uh, all, all the right. documents. But if you're struggling to do that, yeah. then what you do is, you know when you book that appointment for fingerprints yeah. and biometrics to be taken, uh, yeah. ma uh, do the appointment in a centre where there's a scanning service as well. So just make sure. So, uh, and then all you do is you opt for the scanning service. I think you pay an extra forty pounds or something for that. Right. Uh, okay. And you take the documents with you. They they yeah. they scan and upload it. Um, right. So o o all you're doing is when you're booking the appointment, you're you're booking it and and taking on. Uh, we do need the scanning service, and you just pay extra for the scanning service, about £40. Right. Pounds. So How long did it roughly take to get back to you with, uh, for indefinite leave to remain at the moment? Uh, on, on, on indefinite leave to remain, uh, they take about three months, uh, sometimes four months. Okay. Um, you've got the option to do the fast track if you really want it quickly, but they are yeah. charging an extra £800, pounds. and on that, uh, after you appoint, uh, attend the appointment, you do get a decision the next day. Oh, okay. Uh, on, on a standard application, it does take three to four months. It's not. It's not a quick process. I think on their website it says most uh, mo most people get a decision on eight weeks. You don't. It takes three to four months at the moment. Okay. Thank you very much indeed for your call. Uh, we'll take our next call. Uh, hello, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam. Ji, thank you for calling. Ji, what's your question? Ji. Ji, what's your question? 
Hello, Salikum. Ji, Salikum, sir. Ji, bhai. It's a question about the length of validity on the passport. Okay. My wife has a British passport. She's traveling to Pakistan in January, mid-January, and coming back two weeks later. Her passport expires in July. Okay. Can she travel? She has got almost six months validity. No, she should. She should be okay. It won't be a problem with Pakistan. Even other countries where a certain validity period is required. Uh, if you've got six months of validity, there's no problem at all. Um, so right. I, can't, I can't see see a problem. So but when when she returns, uh, uh, it will be almost uh, six months. She comes back on February the first. That's fine. And the exp passport expires mid July. No, that's so it's a, sort absolutely. of one day short of uh, six months. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there's no problem at all with no that. problem at all. So she just, can travel on her absolutely. Old you just need to make sure okay, you travel back before the passport expires otherwise right. It's a oh, yeah, right before it's the passport expires. Uh, because otherwise to to renew to get a new passport made in pakistan it's a bit of a headache so oh yeah it will be yeah but well, thank you very much indeed for your uh, advice no thank problem you thank you for calling yeah. thank you very much bye 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 thank you don't no, right um, so there you go and, and uh, we the, the previous caller that we had was asking questions in relation to nationality so um in terms of documents, uh, I did outline what the documents were, but that's a good question to lead us back into what we were discussing. One of the main requirements be that you must have uh, indefinite leave to remain in the United Kingdom. So let's take the example of a spouse of a British citizen who's in the United Kingdom. And this is the scenario we had with the last caller. Once they apply for indefinite leave to remain, at that stage, they would have lived in the United Kingdom for five years. So uh, the requirement that you must have indefinite leave to remain, that's fulfilled. The requirement in terms of residence is fulfilled as well because they've lived here for five years. Now, there is an additional requirement that if you apply in your own right, you must have lived in the UK for one year after you obtain indefinite leave to remain, unless you are married to a British citizen. So in a typical spouse application where the husband or wife has a British passport, what now happens is after you get your indefinite leave, you can apply straight away for British nationality because by the time you get indefinite leave, you have lived in the UK for five years. And because you've got a British spouse, you don't need to wait uh, a, a, a year. So you would be able to apply for a British passport straight away. It just means that when you submit documents, not only are you submitting your own documents to say, look, here's my passport, here's how I prove residence, here's my BRP card showing that I've got indefinite leave to remain. Because you're applying straight away or not waiting, you would need to submit your wife, husband, wife's passport and marriage certificate as well. I if you wait a year, your partner's documents aren't necessary. Uh, at that stage. So that's what I was trying to explain uh, to the uh, previous caller. Uh, take, for example, somebody who's here not because they're married to a British citizen. Let, let me come back to this uh, after I've taken the next call. Uh, hello, Assalamualaikum. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Do you want um, uh, ek sirf question hai, uh, wo, uh, nationality ka form de, usme likha wa tha tha, uh, last five years from or kya likhna us pe present date ya indefinite is a paan saal wo, wo date likhni hai. جی نیشنلٹی فارم پر جو فائیو یئرز کے پوچھتے ہیں نا وہ آپ ریزیڈنس کے بارے میں بات کر رہے ہیں وہ اڈریس پوچھ رہے ہیں وہ پوچھ جی جی تو اڈریس میں یہ لکھنا پڑتا ہے کہ تو پریزنٹ سو آپ سیم ہی اڈریس پر رہے ہیں ان دی لاس فائیو یئرز یہ سیم ہی ہے تین ایس ایزی نا سو فر اگزامپل اگر آپ 2013 میں کوئی اڈریس میں موو ہو گیا 14 میں آئے تھے 14 میں آئے تھے جی تو آپ وہ ٹھیک ہے جو پریزنٹ اب ہے جی پھر وہ سیکنڈ پیج پہ آپ جائیں گے وہ پوچھتے ہیں کہ پیچھلے فائیو یئرز کے ہم کو اڈریس بتاؤ وہاں تو کچھ بتانے کی ضرورت نہیں ہے کیونکہ آپ نے بتا دیا کہ ٹو تھاؤزن اور فورٹین سے لے کر پریزنٹ تک یہ ایک ہی اڈریس تھا تو اگر وہ لکھ دیں گے نا ٹو تھاؤزن اور فورٹین لکھنا پڑے گا ٹو پریزنٹ دن نیکس پیج پہ جو پوچھتے ہیں لاس فائیو یئرز کا اڈریس وہ فیل کرنے کی ضرورت نہیں ہے
ओके सो जैसे जो डेट हमने एप्लीकेशन फिल कर रहे हैं वो डेट लिख दें वो भी ठीक है मगर टू प्रेजेंट लिख दो वो बेटर होगा चलो ये डेट आपने लिखी है इसके बाद कहाँ रहते थे topical area a lot of people are looking looking at this so where somebody is married to a british spouse it's 5 years of residence where somebody is married to somebody who just has indefinite leave to remain or for example let's say somebody is here in the united kingdom on a tier 2 work permit they have got indefinite leave to remain on their own right because of their tier 2 employment not because of who they're married to uh, obviously that person isn't married to a british citizen in which case uh, once you have indefinite leave to remain you have to wait one year so the important thing here is that currently where you obtain your indefinite leave to remain as a spouse of a british citizen you are able to apply for nationality straight away because your spouse is british if your spouse isn't british you have to wait one year after you get indefinite leave to remain so that's the residence requirement uh, normally it's 5 years uh, because you're not going to get indefinite leave before 5 years now anyway um so that that's the residence requirement now let's look at just on that connected issue which is absences from the united kingdom so as i said at the outset in the united kingdom nationality is primarily based on your immigration status being indefinite leave to remain and you must have lived in the UK for the required time so you can't be living outside the UK and applying for uh, nationality uh, residence and uh, nationality are linked so obviously uh, during that 5 year period or during that 3 year period whatever it is people will be away from the united kingdom either on holiday or because of work purposes etc certain number of absences are permitted the way the home office looks at this is that they initially look at how much time you've spent in the united kingdom in the year before you make the application so for example somebody making the application today in mid november 2019 the home office will look at your absences from Uh, last year which is november 2018 to november 2019 how many days have you been absent the home office will accept absences of up to 100 days from the united kingdom the, the guidance says 90 but in reality uh, in their internal guidance they do accept absences for up to 100 days so you need to count up how long you've been absent for if you've been absent for more than 100 days in the last year you're going to have to wait before you do do you apply for nationality so one crucial thing that you look at when you apply for nationality is your absences from the united kingdom first of all in the year before you make your nationality application and secondly overall in the last 3 years or in the last 5 years how many days uh, have you been absent now if your spouse is british uh, you simply look at the last 3 years and the home office will normally disregard 300 days uh, in the last 3 years so roughly 100 days a year if you've been out of the country it's okay if you're applying on the basis of 5 years then the home office will disregard around 480 days so generally speaking what 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 you can see is that if you're absent for about 3 months per year 
the Home Office will disregard it. The problem arises where you've been uh, away from the country for a longer period. Uh, for example, let's say somebody's fallen ill and you've had to go away, or for business you've gone away, and you've had a significant number of absences. You do then need to take uh, legal advice on whether it's advisable for you to apply for nationality. Um, it may still be possible, despite your absences, to apply for nationality, but there might be additional uh, 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 additional matters that you might need to bring to the attention of the Home Office. So, for example, if you've got significant absences, you might be able to show to the Home Office that despite your absences, your link to the United Kingdom is sufficiently strong by way of the fact that uh, your, your house is here, your business is here, your family is here, etc. So, if you have absences which are within the permitted number of absences, then okay, it, it is straightforward. Otherwise, it could be a problem. Let's take our next call. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Hello, Alwan Salam. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yep, yep. Lovely yes, too. hi. So I'm, I'm just watching your show, actually, and you said something about staying yeah. five years. And yeah. so I came 10 years ago, okay. and, uh, and we overstayed by a few days, and okay. now we've been given this 2.5 years visa, okay. right. which means because now I'm 23, I'm, I'm not eligible for benefits or anything like that. We've sure. been here for about 12 years now. I understand. I understand. Is it possible to apply for citizenship? Because, you know, I, I was sort of born and brought up. Yeah. I understand. Went to school and everything. So, what would your were you, advice be? Were you that? born here in the United Kingdom? No, I wasn't. I actually came when I was 11, but now I'm 23. So, okay. right. we overstayed when I was about 15, and oh. I did not obviously know about it. Okay, all right, okay. I always uh, wanted the, the, some clarity. The, the, yeah, I mean, the issue is because obviously uh, uh, you fall within the adult category, the rules basically require you have to have indefinite leave to remain. So, the first thing is. You're going to have to wait until you get indefinite leave to remain. When do you yeah. when do you qualify for indefinite leave to remain? Another six year, another six years, and that two point five mm. years. So you see, when, it, when it comes to as an adult, when it comes to nationality, um, you, until you get indefinite leave to remain, you, you can't apply. So the first requirement would be ILR. Then you look at uh, the last five years, or for mm -hmm. the good character requirement, you need to go back ten years. Uh, because what they're mm -hmm. doing is, if you've overstayed uh, in the 10 years, uh, they, they'll raise an issue. But in your case, um, when you apply for indefinite leave and then you look back 10 years, uh, that ten, those 10 years will be clear anyway. So the period of overstaying won't affect you uh, at all. Okay. Uh, but mm -hmm. the problem is, is the fundamental problem is, uh, residence comes later on, you must have indefinite first. Yeah. Then you look at residents. Th this is where the problem is now. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's now, <clears throat> sorry, it's now been sort of over 13 years, mm. and we have the residence statuses, or, um, but I, I feel that just because I was 15 at the time, when they sort of almost said, look, sure. you're going to have to go or go by the court. So I, I always did not know mm. much about it. I understand. So as an adult, it's affecting a lot of things I can do, such as going to uni, getting the funding and stuff like that. Absolutely. Big problem with <coughs> the university uh, grants, student finance. Huge problem. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So could I stay in touch with you by an email or something? I think I'd very much appreciate you. Yeah, that, that's absolutely fine. On student finance, there is, there might be some flexibility now, um, but you, ne you still need three years of law for residence. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So th there is some flexibility when people have human rights visas, um, yeah. but e e and they can show three clear years of law for residence. There is some yeah. flexibility now, uh, yeah. but but you know what I've noticed over the last few years, I immigration is a problem in itself to try and get the Home Office yeah. to give you a visa. And a final question, if you don't mind, is you know because they've given us this visa on a European human rights basis, yeah. would that affect us after Brexit? No, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't. Because e even if the country leaves uh, the European Union, the, the human rights laws will still apply I in the same mm -hmm. form, so there's no problem at all with, with that. Okay. Okay. That's so wonderful, thank you very uh, much. If you need to get a hold of me, I think the control room can give you my contact number, and uh, you can give me, give me a ring on that. Thank you very much for your call. We'll take our next call. Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum. Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum. Sorry, I'll uh, ask you again the question. You know the uh, uh, nationality form, mm -hmm. is it best is, uh, uh, to fill it in online? No, I think the easiest thing to do is do the paper form. Okay. Because you know what the paper form? You, yes. you, it's easier to get the referees to sign it. The other thing okay. is, get with the paper form, uh, once you send yeah, yeah. it, 
they give you a letter to take to the post of it to get your biometrics done. So uh, it's cheaper. You can go when you want to the post office to get your biometrics done. Plus, you know those okay. documents that you need to submit? You can just post yeah. them. Uh, with the online system, you've got to scan it. You have to scan it and upload it. I personally think for nationality, okay. the old system is, 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 is better. The price is the same and the processing time is the same as well. So okay. uh, I would so down... Huh. And what next step to... Right, so, so you've got the form AN, uh, yeah. which you fill it in, get your referees to sign it. Then okay. you download the payment slip, which is okay. separate. And okay. it's a s payment slip, you pay £1,330 for nationality. So you fill the payment okay. slip up. And then the third thing you do is you look for the address where the form needs to be submitted. Because on the f form AN, on the payment slip, it doesn't tell you the address. But the Home Office website on nationality will tell you the address to post it to. It'll say something like Department 1 or something. So download the form, fill it in, get your referees to sign it, get your documents together, get the payment slip downloaded, put your bank details in, find the address from the Home Office website as to where you post it, and just post it, uh, special delivery. OK, just post it. So they, they send the appointment for the biometric? They, they just send you a letter saying take the letter okay. to the post office. Okay, when they receive the application, they send you the letter to where to go to the post office uh, yeah. for biometrics. Yeah, so you know for the biometrics, when you get the letter saying take this to the post office and get your fingerprints and uh, photograph taken, okay. just go on, to, go on to the post office website, put your postcode in, and then okay. search for the post office where you can do biometric enrollment. So only okay. some post offices will do that. Whereabouts do you live? Um, in Birmingham. Right. I'm not sure where you go in Birmingham, but Birmingham will have a specific post office where you can uh, enroll your biometrics. So not all post offices will do it. They'll be the main, normally the main post office where you can enroll your biometrics. Okay. But definitely, okay. the pay for form is definitely the easiest way to do it still. Okay, that better for us. Definitely do that, yeah. Because, you know, okay. it's easy to come back. You see it, it's in front of you. I'm a bit old school, so uh, if you're anything like me, the old system is, is normally better. Okay, what about the appointment? Uh, 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 like, we don't need to go submit anything just no, on no, the no, post. No, 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 you don't need to submit anything. Okay. Just wait oh, for... They send the date for a uh, ceremony? Yeah, at the end, at the end. They, they send everything. At the end, they tell you it's all successful. Phone this number for the ceremony, and you just phone up the registry office in Birmingham and book the ceremony date. That's definitely the easiest uh, thing to do. Still, stick to the paper form, s submit it. They'll send you a letter saying take it to a post office. You'll take it to the main post office, get your biometrics done. Just wait. The Home Office will then hopefully say, your application has been approved, ring this number to uh, book your ceremony. And it's at that stage that you need to ring your registry office to book your ceremony. You'll go along, have the ceremony, and on that day, when you do the ceremony, on that day, you will be hopefully be given your nationality certificate, which means you're eligible to apply for a British passport uh, straight away. That. Uh, was a topic on nationality uh, we didn't manage to get through it we got numerous calls on that uh, hopefully i'll i'll, I'll uh, uh, discuss that in greater depth when we come back uh, next week so uh, we should be back monday at six o'clock next week until then start